The introduction scene says, Creating an Effective Export Compliance Program, U.S. Department of Commerce, Bureau of Industry and Security. The Department of Commerce logo is at the top right corner, and the Bureau of Industry and Security logo is at the top left corner of the screen. The next scene has a female character and male character standing next to each other in a room. Hello, and welcome to the world of export compliance. In this video, we're going to introduce you to the eight elements of an effective export compliance program, or ECP for short. BIS developed these elements to assist organizations in complying with the EAR. A blue box appears that says Export Administration Regulations, EAR, 15 CFR Parts 730-774, Regulations Administered and Enforced by the Department of Commerce, Bureau of Industry and Security. A circular chart appears with all eight elements on the circle. The eight elements are Management Commitment, Risk Assessment, Export Authorization, Record Keeping Requirements, Training, Audits, Export Violations and Corrective Action, and Build and Maintain Manual. But before we jump into the eight elements, here are a few tips to keep in mind. A whiteboard appears with the words Export Compliance Program, ECP, written on the whiteboard. One size does not fit all. Your ECP should be tailored to your organization. What works for one company might not work for another. The words Tailor ECP to your organization's needs is written on the whiteboard. Some factors to consider include the size of the company, the number or volume of exports, and the types of items to be exported or re-exported, the end use or the end user, and the geographic location of your customers. These elements were developed specifically for compliance with the EAR. If your company exports items or services that fall under the jurisdiction of other agencies, for example, the Department of Treasury or the State Department, you'll need to ensure that your ECP reflects consideration of those regulations. The words, contact other regulatory agencies for their compliance best practices, is written on the whiteboard. Lastly, BIS goes into greater detail into each element in the export compliance guidelines, which are available for download on the BIS website. The words, BIS export compliance guidelines, is written on the whiteboard, and a screenshot of the BIS website appears on the screen. To download the guidelines, hover your mouse over the Compliance and Training tab and click on Export Management and Compliance from the drop-down menu. The mouse hovers over the Compliance and Training tab from the blue menu bar and a drop-down menu appears. The mouse clicks on Export Management and Compliance from the drop-down menu. The web page changes to the Export Management and Compliance page. The Export Compliance Guidelines can be found under ECP resources on the lower right side of the web page. The mouse moves to the lower right side of the web page and clicks on Export Compliance Guidelines, and a PDF document of the Export Compliance Guidelines pops up. Now on to the eight elements. The first element is management commitment, the most important factor in having an effective ECP. The circular chart with the eight elements appear on the screen and focuses on management commitment. Creating a corporate culture of compliance without management commitment is like trying to push a heavy rock up a hill. Very difficult and you'll never have a successful compliance program. The scene shows a male character trying to push a heavy rock up a mountain. Management can demonstrate its support for compliance by having all employees read and sign a management commitment statement annually. The scene shows a boss signing a management commitment statement. Management should provide sufficient resources to include the budget, staffing, and the tools necessary to run an effective compliance program. Management needs to support training for all employees and maintain active involvement and remember that compliance is a process driven from the top. The scene shows employees in an Export Controls 101 training and the boss walks in applauding the employees. The second element is risk assessment. The goal of this element is to identify preventable risk and build safeguards to minimize vulnerabilities. The circular chart with the eight elements appear and the screen focuses on risk assessment. 
Risk assessment or risk in exporting primarily comes from three areas. The exported item, your company's operations, and your potential customers. You need to know your item and you need to know your ECCN, which stands for Export Control Classification Number. Your ECCN is important because it is used to determine BIS export licensing requirement. A company needs to know its exporting procedures and processes very well, and personnel need to be well-trained in those procedures to minimize risk. It's important to know your customers. Screening your customers against the consolidated screening list and requesting an end-use statement can help mitigate your company's exporting risk. A screenshot of the consolidated screening list and the BIS 711 form which is a statement by ultimate consignee and purchaser appear on the screen. The third element is export authorization. The circular chart with the eight elements appear on the screen and focuses on export authorization. Understanding and implementing element three is critically important to export compliance. It involves determining agency jurisdiction, item classification, making license determinations, and developing customer screening procedures. The words jurisdiction, classification, and license determinations appear on the screen. Element number four is record keeping. The circular chart with the eight elements appear on the screen and focuses on record keeping requirements. And the screen changes to a conference room with the female character teaching the attendees about record keeping requirements. BIS record keeping requirements are found in part 762 of the EAR. Parties are required to keep export-related records for five years from the latest of certain activities, such as the date of export, re-export, transshipment, diversion, or termination of the transaction. Pictures of various documents appear on the screen as examples of the types of documents that would be considered records to keep on file. BIS is one of several federal agencies with record-keeping requirements for export transactions, so make sure that you are in compliance with record-keeping requirements of any other agencies that have jurisdiction over your transactions. This scene says U.S. Department of State Directorate of Defense Trade Controls, 22 CFR Part 122.5, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, 19 CFR Part 163, U.S. Census Bureau, 15 CFR 30.66C, and U.S. Department of the Treasury, 31 CFR, Part 501. Element number five is training. Training should be job specific so that staff members understand their responsibilities. The circular chart with the eight elements appear on the screen and focuses on training. For example, the sales department might need to be aware of which countries would require export licenses. This scene shows people sitting around a conference table with a map of the world on the wall. The shipping department might need to be aware of export clearance requirements and never pass up an opportunity to provide training for your employees. This scene shows people moving boxes at a loading dock. Formal training can be supplemented with posters, videos, newsletters, and company handbooks. This scene shows two employees in the break room. There is an export compliance poster on the refrigerator, an export compliance video on the TV monitor, and one employee is reading an export compliance manual. Element six is audits. Build an audit mechanism into your compliance program. The circular chart with the eight elements appear on the screen and focuses on audits. Then the next scene changes to the male character sitting at a desk in a room with filing cabinets. The purpose of the audit is to identify compliance deficiencies, risk, and inconsistencies between your company's stated exporting policies and its actual practices. If resources allow, consider using a third-party auditor for an unbiased evaluation of your organization's compliance program. Three people wearing suits walk into the room representing the third-party auditors. The seventh element is the handling of export violations and taking corrective actions. The circular chart with the eight elements appear on the screen and focuses on export violations and corrective actions. The next scene changes to an office with three employees at their desks. Ensure that employees have clear guidance concerning what actions 
needs to take place, including who to contact within the organization when a potential violation is identified. If you believe that you need to report the potential violation to BIS, please refer to Part 764 of the EAR for instructions on how to submit a voluntary self-disclosure. Early detection and fast response are key to minimizing exposure if violations of the EAR may have occurred. One of the employees looks shocked, and a text bubble appears that says, uh-oh, did we ship without a license? The employee has an idea, shown by a light bulb, and picks up his phone to call his coworker. The next text bubble says, I'd like to report a possible violation. His coworker's text bubble says, okay, what happened? Element number eight is to build and maintain your export compliance manual. The circular chart with the eight elements appear on the screen and focuses on build and maintain manual. And then the scene changes to an employee walking into the boss's office. First and foremost, if you haven't been directed by senior management to create a formal export compliance manual, get that support and buy-in and get management to support the establishment of an export compliance team consisting of experts from different parts of your organization. A text bubble appears for the employee that says, we need an export compliance manual and we should get input from the whole company. The boss stands up and says, agreed, in the text bubble. The scene changes to the male character with a whiteboard that says, export compliance manual, ECP. BIS will provide a one-time review at no charge. The BIS Export Management and Compliance Division will review your ECP free of charge. We encourage you to take advantage of this free service. For information on how to submit your ECP, a screenshot of the BIS website appears on the screen. Hover your mouse over the Compliance and Training tab on the BIS website and click on Export Management and Compliance from the drop-down menu. Click on Submit your ECP under Contact Us. The mouse hovers over the Compliance and Training tab from the blue menu bar and a drop-down menu appears. The mouse clicks on Export Management and Compliance from the drop-down menu. The web page changes to the Export Management and Compliance page. Then the mouse moves to the right of the screen to the Submit Your ECP link. Then a red box appears around the Contact Us box. As always, the Bureau of Industry and Security is here to help. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to contact any of the BIS compliance specialists listed on the webpage or the Office of Exporter Services. Thank you for watching this video and happy exporting. The last scene says U.S. Department of Commerce Bureau of Industry and Security with website www.bis.doc.gov. The following phone numbers are on the screen. Washington, D.C. 202-482-4811 Irvine, California, 949-660-0144, and Enforcement Hotline, 1-800-424-2980. The Department of Commerce logo is at the top left corner, and the BIS logo is at the top right corner of the screen.